We're back on the build, guys. <laughs> so today, starting the transformation of Bowser. It's been a plan making for months. It's finally happening. We won't tell you quite yet what is happening, but stay tuned, watch the episode, and see the transformation happening. Say goodbye to the white box. We have been so pumped about this for so long. Every time I look at Bowser, I love him, but I don't, right. I don't like the white box. <laughs> hate the white box. So that look is gonna be gone very soon. It will no longer look like a refrigeration truck or a Red Cross truck, whatever you want to call it really. So I'm going to get stuck in, let's get it done. What you doing up there? Sanding the edges with a block. Awesome, so most of the orbital sanding is done. So basically I've just roughed up the fiber reinforced plastic with a 180 grit sanding disc and then on the aluminium I'm using 120 grit. So um, yeah, just roughing it up. That's got the added bonus of kind of cleaning the truck as well. And then uh, soon, once that's all done, we'll do a bit more masking. I'll probably pull out the windows, mask over those, and then we will degrease the entire surface so it is spotlessly clean. And that'll be pretty much all the boring stuff done at least. And as they say, paint is only good as your prep work. And that's a wrap for today. Pretty much done for today, yeah. So we just spent quite a bit of time cleaning the aluminium extrusion with some metal and some white rags. So you can see here, it's really weird. I would have not thought that aluminium is kind of like got that greasy residue on it. So we try to remove as much as possible on all the corner of the box. And yeah, not much, I guess, visible change for now. But tomorrow we're starting some priming and we'll tell you a bit more about what is about to happen. Nice and early back at it for some masking, protecting the solar panel up there. Mm -hmm. Making sure we don't have any little surprise on the roof. <laughs> well, beautiful day today. But unfortunately in the coming days, we've got some rain coming up. So we might be moving to the shed very soon and tackle the rest of the day. All right, and we're in the shed. We are removing all our windows. We've got one out already. Removing the inner frame. And then just masking the edges so that we don't paint over the windows and then the still can still work. And we've got no leaks, no windows, which we never had so far. We, so we really don't want to create new leaks. So that's the plan. All right, and because we have removed our windows, I'm using the leftover for acrylic polish and cleaning them. Hopefully I can remove those last scratches. It's not too hard, even if that doesn't do the best job, it's good for now and we've got a little surprise as well coming up in the next few weeks. Pretty exciting. Yeah, popping the cab up. So that is the first time that we'll be doing this. We can access the entire back wall more easily. Luckily we've got some assistance yeah. from Darren. It's done in big one is Unimog, so that's really cool to be able to tilt our cap for the first time. How oh, amazing. What are you doing? Raising the cab. All right. See what happens. the never-ending fun job of degreasing the box today. <laughs> Far out. 
the sealant grabs all of the dirt, makes it so difficult. Yeah, so we spend quite a bit of time going through every single corner of the aluminium so that it's like white and shiny. I don't see us painting today. Yeah, <laughs> but that's alright. We're not in a rush. It's better to take some time to do a great prep job, not be stressed out to start the primer halfway through the box. So we'll start nice and early with that tomorrow. Now I'm gonna make a lunch. Feels very weird to go in the box and we've got no windows. Fortunately, this one we won't be able to remove it because one screw broke uh, inside. So we're gonna have to mask this one. So that makes the process a little bit trickier. So yeah, I'm gonna make lunch. Um, no second coffee. I'm stopping second coffee. Chris has stopped coffee entirely. He'll tell you actually a bit more about it because he feels so much better with that coffee, which is quite surprising. Less, I guess, anxiety and stress, which is quite appealing so I might give up as well just finishing a batch of coffee and then maybe uh, no coffee for NG there The finished result for the day fully masked big day big day and we are back for day three making an omelette for breakfast last night was not a really good night of sleep in the shed surprisingly we got invaded by mozzie so we had to get our inner frame of the windows that we just taped because we were getting smashed, aren't we, Chris? Oh, yeah. Did you have fun? Like get smashed, like a million mosquitoes coming in <laughs> every minute while we were trying to sleep and so, biting our face. So that was like the little uh, last minute fix. And yeah, as well, at 1 a.m., like the wind picked up. So I was like worried that all the masking that I had done yesterday would just like fly away. So I had to put like some boxes everywhere. That was fun. Today it's gonna rain, so it's good at least we are covered. Chris already, already starting to get ready and we'll show you in a sec what is the job for today. So after much deliberation we've decided to go with Raptor again. Now we were umming and ahhing for a long time about doing a wrap on here but we decided after even just doing the few trails that we've already done with how wide the mog is I really don't think a wrap will have lasted mm. especially on these leading edges of the aluminium. So uh, really, really stoked to be working with Raptor again. And Ange and I are gonna paint the entire box awesome. with Raptor coat. So it's gonna be very similar to what we did on the cab. And as you can kind of see, Ange can kind of show you, it's still in perfect condition. And we have smashed it along branches and stuff. Now the branches will sometimes leave scrape marks, but it will never bring the paint up. So that was kind of real life experience with having this raptor coat so and we're very very happy with that especially this leading edge here just copped so much abuse already and it hasn't flaked at all so yeah we're going to do the entire box ourselves now we're going to do it a bit differently than how we did the cab and the undercarriage and chassis we're actually going to roll it on so a few reasons for that first of all we don't want the overspray and second of all it's such a large, even surface. I don't trust myself with the uh, spray gun to get a really nice, even finish. So we're going to go, we're going to roll it on. It'll be the first time I've used a paint roller. So um, I'm hoping I can actually get a result that I'm happy with. But um, yeah, we're very, very excited. Very excited. Because it's been a long time in the making. It is. Last time the box is white. Yep. Bring it on.
no longer have a wild camper. <laughs> my yeah, God. <gasps> I'm pooped. Oh my God, you work so hard. You did really, really well. So yeah, the rolling went pretty good. Pretty smoothly, yeah. We used just over half of the can. Of the primer. Of the primer and um, it's gone on really nice, nice and thick. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. And this is the roller that we've used. This one was really good, actually. You quite like rolling with this. It didn't damage. It could stand up to acrylic, yeah, so it didn't fall apart. This one, however, the smaller one, it was not as good. So just be aware if you want to do that job to not use this one. Mm. So we're done for the day and tomorrow we paint. Tomorrow we paint. Yay. And today is the day where we paint our grey box and it all. <laughs> yeah, about time, about bloody time. Yeah, quite nervous this morning. I'm very, very nervous. Yeah, it's very nervous. Putting like a plan into action. So we've got all our Raptor boxes. So in total, we've got five kits of four liters plus a two liter paint. So we got it from Bailey Trading in Adelaide. Luckily, it was one of the only suppliers that can mix that type of paint. Normally, we usually get our paint in MLB distributors in Perth, but unfortunately, because we're no longer in WA, we can't get the help of Jake and the team who have been amazing in the past. But yeah, hopefully, it should be the exact same batch of color. There might be a slight little uh, difference, but hopefully not too bad, and we can resist it. The Raptor, in that respect, is quite forgiving, which is nice. It shouldn't be like too much of a difference for the cab, even after all that time. So yeah, we're gonna get cracking with the first kind of like bottle and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a long day. So for those who are not familiar with Raptor, you get one bottle like so. You mix it with the hardener that is provided as well in the kit. You've got a little mixing cup which has already had the line so you don't have to do any math for that, which is great. And then that's your choice how much paint you want to use mm -hmm. for the tinting. So it can be up to 10 or 15% of the total volume. Uh, I think we are more about the 7.5% mark. So yeah, that works well for us in the past to just add 75 ml of paint. So that's what we're gonna do today as well. 75 ml of anti-paint. One thing to note as well with Raptor, it's quite a time sensitive product. That's why we're a little bit stressed today. So for example, once you open a bottle and you mix it with a hardener, you only have one hour until it fully cures. So yeah, it's quite like stressful in that respect. And it's a big surface, so we have to play around with like the ladder, move it around. So yeah, that's definitely um, adding another element of stress. But we managed in the past, so today we'll manage as well. First time rolling it though. <laughs> so once you've mixed all the products together, you have to shake the bottles for two minutes. So that's the warm up for the day. You can do a lot of shaking today. 75 ml. 75 ml of paint. Nice. Every single drop counts. Boom. Two minute timer. Check this out. This is the result. After only one box, got heaps of coverage. So four liters down the other side, similar to this side. It's um, it's pretty good using the roller. It gives you some control, but I think it will require many more coats than what we needed to do when we were spraying on the cab. Uh, so I think yeah, it's just going to take a lot longer. But but yeah, we'll, <laughs> we've got like that. The result's going to be okay. Yay.
All right, the start of day four. Back at it. Let's get it done. Hopefully today's the last one. All right, so I won't show you quite yet what's happening behind the camera because Chris is finalizing the final bottles and it's pretty much looking almost finished. We want to do more like a big reveal when we remove all the masking tape. So we are on to the last box already of Raptor, which is crazy. So we've used already 17 bottles and there's still some little elements of like primer underneath. So it definitely many coats are required when you roll with some at least three coats now. So yeah, Chris has been working so, so hard these past days. Five coats. Five coats? Yeah, at least five coats on every square inch. Oh, I'm naked. Oh. Getting somewhere. Rather do it ourselves than pay someone else to do it. Though. Yeah. Didn't realize it was going to take this long. Spraying is much more simple when it comes to Raptor, much more simple. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Always quite a bit naive when we get into big jobs. It's like the build, we're like, oh yeah, just a few months. Yeah. A year <laughs> later, here if we are. If we've never done something before, <laughs> well, how hard could it be? Well, rolling six coats is actually proven pretty hard. You got to do a good workout there. Yeah. Have a break. I'm pooped. Oh. <laughs> So first time with the MOG fully wrapped coated out in the sun and I must admit I'm way happier than I was with it in the shed. I didn't want to say too much, I was trying not to worry Ange, but the colour match wasn't exactly the same in the shed. But I think that may have been because of the lighting. The lighting was a bit off, it was a bit patchy and I think that was making it look way worse than it does. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell. Can you see a color difference between the cab and the box? I don't think so. Out in the sun, it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. One thing that seems to get on Angie's nerves a bit, and I understand, is that there are some areas where I kind of had to do brush strokes that weren't completely vertical, and they have sort of shown now that the Raptor is fully cured. So in certain light, you can see sort of roller marks, I guess. Something that you didn't get with the cab when it was uh, sprayed on. So that would be, I would say, the biggest two downsides to rolling. First up, I think it took at least six coats on the majority of the box, whereas the cab only took two coats with the spray gun. So you need to bank for at least another whole day of painting. And that made it, it took a long, long time. I was pretty knackered by the end of it. We both were. Uh, and then the second downside is you have to be really careful of your texture with the roller. If I was to do it again, I would have used a much coarser roller. I think that would have laid on more Raptor coat at once rather than having to do so many coats with the rollers we had. And also in terms of preparation and gear, much more expensive for rolling as opposed to for uh, using the gun, provided you have a gun and an air compressor at home. If you didn't, then maybe the roller overall would end up being a bit, bit cheaper. I mean, I think we roughly spent about $200 on rollers and a bit of prep for this box, something that you need to factor in. So really keen to hear what you guys think about it. So overall as well, I'm like Chris, I'm much happier now that, you know, it's been a few days. I think that was a big shock as well, because when you go from a 
perfectly clean as well white box to that that was quite a shock when we finished we had like a few days to kind of like sit and, and have a look at it but what really helped and as you can see it's like those black accents that we've made that breaks up the all like sandy kind of like look obviously this little vent here white we've got a new stainless steel vent on the way so that's gonna look as well a bit nicer in that respect we have also removed this uh, panel at the back i'm not too sure how to call it how do you call that it's the, basically the sign that is do not overtake turning vehicle <laughs> We were told when we registered the Unimog that we had to get it and when we look at the law at that time that was only for vehicles over 12 ton GVM which is a bit I guess controversial in that respect. Well it's just hard to understand it mm. doesn't say over 12 ton it's yeah it says over 12 ton so people assume that includes 12, 12 ton, ton but it doesn't. Now we spoke with Darren engineer Ian is what he's talking about so we've removed it and it definitely looks much better at the rear. It does. So yeah, so all these new additions really break it up. So let's just get a bit more details about it. So what do we have at the rear? So courtesy of Darren, now I had the idea to put two Adventure Kings trash bags here and I was going to use eye bolts, but I wasn't convinced it was going to work very well. So I ran the idea past Darren and he massively perfected it and gave us these. So these are the aluminium kind of locking rings, I guess you could call them, from an aircraft seating. So we cut these up, put four of them on here, and then we've got these awesome buckle type arrangements that lock in, and we've secured our King's trash bag. I hate the King's logo, so I've spray painted <laughs> over that, so it's just a black bag. Now we need to get four more of these rings for here, and then another bag will go here, of course. So yes. that has helped break it up a little bit. Yes. We will use this trash bag obviously for recycling, for firewood, any dirty gear. That's going to be so much better. So we remove our trash wood that we had on the side of the fuel tank. Fuel tank yeah. It was as well like becoming pink with like all the red yeah, dirt that we it, got. It was falling apart and it was never a really good option, but it gave me a little bit of space for firewood. The one bonus of the trash wood was it's much bigger than these two mm. bags. Would have been a little bit too big to be hanging in mm -hmm. this spot though. So we went for two smaller bags. We've got about the space of one trash roo, I guess. Yeah, no, it's great design. So we're happy with that. And then we also have this, which is courtesy of Ian and Trish with Unimog Adventures on YouTube. They very kindly shared their idea with us for basically running a cheap, easy awning. So it's just a sail track. We got these from Bunnings and we've cut them to shape. We've got one here and we've got a few on the other side that we'll show you. Another bit of long sail track here next to the main door. And then we've also got sail track now on all the windows. So if you've seen Ian and Trisha's video, you would see that they put canvas over their, uh, their acrylic windows to stop it from scratches. So we've already caught a ton of scratches, which I'm gutted about, but there was kind of no way out. But that was an awesome idea I never thought of, which was to use canvas, stretch it over, run it up some sail track, and that'll protect the windows when we're off-road. We will show you it in use in an actual vlog, rather than getting out and kind of staging it here. We'll actually show you them in use, because I'm sure they'll be amazing. Trish sewed those up for us, so thank you so much, Trish. Sent them over here from over east, and we got them really fast and put it all together, so we're really grateful for that. We have a... 230 awning that comes out from here with two poles super basic but nice the awnings like a really beautiful green on the top and we're happy with it and again we'll show you that in an actual vlog when we're using it and it's not even an actual awning it's just the side wall of mm. the awning so not only in that respect you it's much lighter than the normal uh, awning it's as well much cheaper that was only like 70 dollars just to buy the awning plus the poles mm. probably all up We've got like an awning for between $100 and $150. Yeah, it was really, really How cheap. How good is that? And it stops a big fat awning sticking out the side, which just wouldn't work. I mean, you've seen the tracks we go on, it would just get <laughs> decimated yeah. and the bag would get all ripped. And yeah, we just it wasn't going to work. We may have said before, we don't want an electric awning up high because we've actually seen in videos with other expedition <laughs> trucks, when they are really high, and it would have to be high to be above our door, when they fully come out, they don't actually really give much shade. You would end up in a little tiny sh like shade of, patch of shade right here and it just doesn't really work. Yeah. 
so that is it for this week we have just filmed our walk around finally after all that time that will be released next week if all goes to plan so stay tuned for that we've got a lot of like things happening we'll share a bit more about our plans in the future with you but yeah until then thanks again for watching and following along thanks so much guys we'll see you next week